If you know anything about the Canadian auto industry, you've heard of Frank Stronach. He's the founder of Magna International, based here in Aurora, Ontario, and one of the largest auto parts suppliers in the world. But he's also interested in several other ventures. He's involved in horse racing and owns several major racetracks. He champions organic food and opened a restaurant that serves it. And now he wants to change the way we get around in cities and urban areas with the Sarit. It stands for safe, affordable, reliable, innovative transport. And we're here to take one for a spin. It's an unusual looking little thing, but it's designed for practicality. It has a safety cage and a stamped aluminum floor pan, and there are disc brakes on all its wheels. The Sarit is entirely electric. It'll charge overnight from a regular household plug, and that should get you 100 kilometers of range. The little car is capable of up to 60 kilometers an hour, but the company says the maximum speed will be regulated according to local laws. While we won't have a chance to try it today, the Sarit is also able to handle snow. With all that said, let's go drive one. Now you're going to have to bear with me here because the Sarit is pretty noisy, so I'm going to try my best to let you hear over me. This is a prototype and the company is working on correcting some of the issues that it has, one of them being the noise. Like I say, it is pretty noisy in here. And the other is that the suspension can bump pretty hard if you, uh, if you go over an imperfection in the road. So these are the two things that they're gonna have to work on and before it ends up being in the hands of the public. Right now I'm doing 32 kilometers an hour, which is what this one is regulated to. This thing is really fun. It's a blast to drive. The visibility is very good. And the fact that I'm just sort of moving around fuel free, uh, I'm only taking up as much space as I need. It's like a bicycle. It's like a scooter, but I have this safety cage around me. Uh, I still wouldn't want to get hit by a full size truck, but I certainly have that level of safety and I believe that I'm a lot more visible, especially the fact that I'm in this, this really, really bright green one. But it's not meant for, you know, long, long drives or anything like that. This is what I would use to get to work, to get to the bus station, run errands. Having just one wheel in front, well, that's partly because it's cheaper and it's easier to engineer the steering on it. And also it, it has it, it improves the the driving position it improves visibility you don't get the idea that you're in a small car it feels more like you're in a scooter that just happens to have a box around it in the winter time apparently the motor will create enough heat to keep you at least fairly comfortable inside the cabin and of course you're protected from rain and snow in the summertime okay there's no air conditioning but these windows are pretty big and the doors do come off. Turning circle, well, we can do donuts in this. Tell me you don't want to drive this thing. You can basically leave it anywhere you would leave a bicycle. It locks up, it has a cargo compartment, and did I mention, it's fun. The Sarit would fall into the same category as e-bikes and e-scooters, and the intention is that it would be allowed on any street where you can ride a bicycle. It's designed similarly to a three-wheeled motorcycle, so a passenger can sit behind the driver. In nice weather, you can take off the doors. That's the air conditioning. It has three speeds plus reverse, and you twist the throttle rather than press an accelerator. The motor is at the rear, and it drives those two rear wheels. There's a cargo compartment at the rear, or you can add an accessory holder to carry shopping baskets or golf clubs. The company also thinks it would be a good choice for university or business campuses, or even for short-term rentals, the same way many cities have bike share programs. It's expected to price around $8,000 or so in Canadian dollars. These could be used for package or food delivery, or landscape or public works maintenance, or any commercial situation where a large diesel truck is way more than what's needed. So I'm here with Frank Stronach, who is the driving force behind the Sarit. Tell me, why come up with these? We already have electric vehicles, lots of them on the road. Why make these? Well, there's quite many reasons. Uh, 
I think the main reason is that sooner or later we're going to be running out of gasoline. So that's a very serious question. And uh, it takes less energy than a big car, right? Okay, so uh, you can plug those cars in on any outlet, one then, and uh, after a few hours you can go uh, 100 kilometers for less than a dollar. The other reason is parking is very expensive. To build parking spots in, in, in the big cities, it's very costly, right? And so the cost just climbing, right? From the parking to gasoline, etc., etc. So we, here we try to bring costs down, right? We, we just start to move in now production equipment. Everything is automated when we produce those cars. And I think we should by in two months, uh, by the end of May, I think we should get the first cars off the line. But about how much are they going to cost? I think between six thousand and seven thousand US dollars, uh, you be able to get a car like that. And I should point out, the car is really a two-seater, right? We have, uh, we can adjust the seat inside, and like on a motorcycle, right? You have two people sit behind each other, and we had some fair-sized people. Two people drive the car, right, and it's fine. The Siri was developed in Canada, and it's planned to go into production in Canada in the summer of 2023. Eventually, the plan is to build it in factories here and in the U.S., with all its components made in North America. In a world where cities are becoming ever more crowded, and where many people drive around in much larger vehicles than are needed to do the job, the Siri might well be an excellent solution. For Driving.ca, I'm Joe McIntosh, and for more news, reviews, and vehicles like this, be sure to visit us on Instagram and Twitter.